AP Calculus students, welcome to section 5.2. You have two assignments in 5.2 A and B, and this video will cover both of those sections. So notice the notes are pretty short. Um, we are going to um, be doing integration resulting in the natural log, LN, and other expressions. Um, there's not many notes because 5.1 was the differentiation of the natural log function. And um, so when we integrate them, we're just doing the antiderivative. Again, I really appreciate chapter five because it brings in derivatives and integration with new um, functions. And they're asking you for tangent lines. Again, they're asking you for areas. They're asking for implicit differentiation, average value of a function. So they take all the things that you already learned, um, but use a new function. So it's a great practice to bring everything together that was kind of separate before. So the integration of one over x dx is the natural log of the absolute value of x. Again, we know that this, um, the domain of the natural log of x has to be greater than zero. And so that's why we have the absolute value here, where here that's not necessarily true, but because of the result, we know that we have to, the x has to be greater than zero. Or if you do a u substitution, one the integration of one over u du would be the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c, where u is to the first power. And you'll see what I, what I mean by that. In other words, uh, we've had lots of, um, we use the power rule if we had u squared here, right? And we would integrate u to the negative two and, and things like that. But when your denominator in total is to the first power, that's when it's going to result in the natural log. So we have seen lots of integration with u substitution and um, that has a quotient in it. And so what we have in section 5.2 then is the integration that results in the natural log and um, other quotients that result in um, not non-natural logs, right? But using power rules instead, right? So we're kind of focusing here, but we're bringing all the other things together that you learn to integrate when there was a quotient. So, um, so that you can start um, getting some practice at just trying some different forms of integration and trying to work out in your head, okay, what will this result in? What is this that I have? So let's let's do some practice on that. Okay, so I even put, here's all the different things that you might see. So on A, um, you could end up with a natural log uh, expression, right? So you'll have one over some expression in the denominator to the first power. So that would be like number six in your book. Let's take a look. So on number six, um, to me, if I had to do a U substitution here, I believe it would be the denominator. So let's take a look. That would be U equals four minus three X. And my DU would be a negative three DX. Okay, and as always, um, I don't see a negative three, so I'm gonna divide by negative three and I'll have a negative one third. So I think when I do my uh, use substitution and I look on the right, I think I have everything I need for a perfect use substitution. Looks like I'm kind of on the edge here. Let me give you a little bit more room here to see. So let's try a substitution. So let's integrate. And here's my u in my denominator. And one dx is just a dx. And I'm going to replace that with a negative one third du. There we go. Well, now I know the integration of one over u. It is the natural log of the absolute value of u. So I have a negative one third, the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And my u was four minus three x. There we go. And there's our final answer. Now, um, if there, if this had been a definite integral or I had lower x value and an upper x value, right, I would have kept my u's, switched my x's to u's, and done my f of b minus f of a, okay? I also want to point out to you that this, in fact, is the answer that they have in the book 
Um, there are um, other answers that are possible on the AP exam. So it's a, if it's okay with you, I'm just gonna write right over here and then I'll erase and move on to this problem. Some other things that you might see is by the power rule, you might see on the AP exam that they use the power rule to bring the exponent up, right? So they do use um, logarithmic properties. So that's something you might see. Um, believe it or not, here's something else you might see. Because this negative one third could be shown as a negative one third to a negative one, you might see this expression where I put this expression because it's a, it's a negative one in the denominator. You might see that where I keep the one third. Notice that this is to the one third power, so you might see this in a cube root. So this is the answer they have in the book, but by logarithmic properties, these are some other things you might see on the AP exam. And so you just have to know when you look, go, hmm, none of them look like this, but I'm sure I did it right. How else could they have shown it using properties? Okay, so it takes a little bit of practice. All right, so let's move on to the next problem. So on the next problem, I do see a quotient and I do see an inside function in the denominator. I'm going to make my u 9 minus x squared. My du then would be a negative 2x dx. I don't see a negative 2. I'm going to put a negative 1 half out front. I think I have a perfect u substitution right here. Let's take a look. Okay, so I'm going to be uh, integrating. This is going to be u to the one half in the denominator in my x dx, I'm going to replace with a negative one half du. So what's happening here is notice my power in the denominator is not one. This is not going to result in a natural log function. It's only when the u or my denominator is to the first power. So they're mixing in things that you already know, okay? Uh, if you don't mind, because I don't have material, I'm going to rewrite this as u to the negative one half. We did, we did this quite a bit in um, four or five, right? Okay. Add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. One half divided by one half, right? Leaves me with a negative. And then this is u to the one half. u to the one half plus c. Okay, I integrated. I'm going to put my u back in. And of course, you might also see that, um, that they use a radical sign instead of the one half, use the square root sign. Okay, number 32, um, tangent of phi theta. It is tempting to think, and you're welcome to do this. I wouldn't write this, just watch me on this one. That if I make u phi theta, right, I see an inside function here, right, then my du would be 5 d theta, right? But I don't see a 5 multiplying the function, so I'll divide by 5. But my problem is, is now I'm integrating tangent of u, one fifth tangent of u du. And I don't know how to integrate tangent. So it was a nice try, right? But there's no trig function that when you take the derivative of it, you get tangent. So nice try there. So we need a trig identity. Let's write tangent as sine of phi theta over cosine of phi theta d theta. Okay, now let's make u the denominator, u equals cosine of phi theta. du would be, let's see, the derivative of cosine would be a negative sine of phi theta times the derivative of the inside function. So I'll also multiply by a phi out front d theta. <clears throat> so great, I do see a sine of phi theta. 
I, so I think I'm doing okay. I don't see a constant of a negative one fifth. So I'm gonna put that out front, right? Divide both sides by negative five. There we go. I think I have a perfect U substitution right here. Let's take a look. Um, so I'm going to integrate. Boy, I didn't leave myself enough room anywhere, did I? So <laughs> here's my U, cosine of five theta. Sine of five theta du is a negative one fifth um, du. There we go. That's a negative one fifth du. There we go. Okay. Perfect integration. That's the natural log of u. So let's keep our negative one fifth. This is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And my u was cosine of five theta. I'm going to put that back in for you. So again, this feels weird that you have a cosine in a natural log function of that's how you know you're in calculus. That's, that's a true answer right there. Okay. Now, wow, I really didn't leave myself room right here, but maybe we'll be okay. So again, a number 22, you know what? I'm going to bring it in a little bit more. There we go. Here, let me see. Just going to adjust here. Oh, wrong way. There we go. Bringing it a little bit more for you. So here's what I want you to know. I'm going to write a few things and, um, and just watch is what I'm saying. I do see an inside function inside my natural log function. So let's say I try u is x cubed. That's a valid effort, right? du is 3x squared dx. No oh boy, that's not going to work. I don't see an x squared. I can't match a power. And not only that, this would be in the numerator, and I don't have that. So let me try u then to be the natural log of x cubed. They don't have a parenthesis. I won't do that to you either. Okay, x cubed. All right, let's try the derivative of this. Um, that would be um, when I bring, that would be one over x cubed times three x squared. Okay, that might actually work. Okay, but I think the point I'm trying to get to here is I can actually use a logarithmic property to make this easier. So whenever you have a natural log or any log with a power on the, on the solution, I think it's best to write it where you can bring that constant out front and multiply it by the rest of the function. Because wouldn't it be much easier to write the natural log of x cubed is three times the natural log of x, then your inside function in the natural log is just an x, right? So much easier. So try to spot logarithmic properties when you can. So here's what I'm saying. I'm saying that I have this x right here, right? And that this expression I can write is three times the natural log. I also think then it's possible that this is a one third that I could move out, right? This expression is the same, right? Okay, this is still bothering me a little bit right here, this product here. But I do know that the derivative of the natural log is one over x. Like I, I kind of need this one over x here. I think a u substitution of the natural log might just be what I need. Let's see. So I'm going to make u my natural log of x. I'm going to, and then my du will be one over x dx. Okay. I think I'm going to have to go up into here <laughs> and then erase to do the last problem. Let's take a look. I think I have a perfect substitution here. So this would be one third. Don't want to forget that. Okay. This is a u right here. I took care of that. Here, and this one over x dx, oh, it's a du. Okay, that's, that's looking really good. I know how to integrate this. So here's my one third. The integration of one over u is the absolute value of the natural log. Sorry, one third times the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. Okay, now what was my u? Okay, 
the natural log of X. Again, I know that feels weird, like to have a natural log inside a natural log, but it happens. It, it happens more often than you would think. Again, some things they could have done. This is how it's it's written in the book. They could have brought the one third up as the exponent. There's some things they could have done, but we have it. Okay. So um, I'm going to get a shot of this. I'm going to erase this so that I have room to do this last problem. Okay. You got that? Okay. Let's do it. Okay. But, and in fact, what I'm going to do is erase and give me room for this last problem. I put it last because it takes a lot on number 18. Okay, again, let's see if I can pull you in just a little bit more here, come on. There we go, kind of puts it on an angle. Okay, here's what I want you to know. We saw a quotient here, it ended up being a natural log. We saw a quotient here, it ended up being a power. We used a trig identity to write this as a quotient. Um, we used some log properties here. We have another quotient here. Normally, when you see a quotient and the degree of the numerator is higher than the denominator, this does mean that you need to use long division first. That's right. Told you in algebra two, right? And in pre-calculus in chapter two, you would need long division for, um, for problems in calculus. Here it is. Okay. Take a look. If I need my u, x plus five, my du is just a dx. I, I, I can't work with that numerator. If I make my numerator, um, u is x cubed minus six x minus 20. First of all, my du is a three x squared. I'm already out. There's no x squared, right? And I certainly can't put a du in the denominator. This is long division. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. And then we will integrate the quotient because this is actually a division problem. And the quotient is the answer. It's an equivalent expression that we will then integrate. What would I multiply x squared? Uh, sorry, x by to get x cubed, x squared. So of course I will fully multiply. That will be x cubed plus five x squared. And then of course I have to subtract. There we go. I am left with a negative five x squared minus six x minus 20. Okay. What would I multiply x by here to get a negative five x squared, a negative five x? I will fully multiply by the x plus five. That is a negative five x squared minus 25 x. I'm going to subtract. I have a 25 x and a minus six x is 19 x minus 20. What would I multiply x by here to get 19 x? A 19, that would be 19 x uh, plus 95. And then I will subtract these and I get a negative 115 left. That is a negative 115 over my divisor x plus five, okay? So minus 115 over x plus five. So I'm gonna circle this in purple. This expression is equivalent to this expression in purple. Okay, get a good shot of that. Okay, because I'm gonna erase the rest and we are gonna integrate this expression right here. Okay, all right, you got it? Okay. All right, let's go ahead and integrate x cubed minus 5x plus 19 minus 115 over x plus 5. Okay, first of all, I know how to integrate these three terms. I'm going to do that, right? I could put in inter inter integral, can I speak today? <laughs> integral sign 
here, here, and here, and here, right? But let's go ahead. I know how to integrate. This is going to be x to the fourth. Oops. No, it's not. I'm going to check and make sure I wrote the quotient right. I did. Sorry, I fixed it right here. Let's integrate. Add one to the exponent, divide by the exponent. Okay. Add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. The integration of 19 is 19x. This is my problem here. So let me write it. Okay, it's minus. Let me bring this constant out front. 115 times the integral of one over x plus five dx. Okay, now let's take a look. If I need my u x plus five, beautiful. Here we go. My du would be dx. Perfect. I would have one over u du, okay? And in other words, it's the natural log of u or the natural log of x plus five, right? And let's go ahead and write that. So we're good here. Let's hang on to this. Let's hang on to that. This is a negative 115, the integral of one over u du. Okay. Well, I know how to integrate um, one over u. It's the natural log of u plus c. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. The natural log of u plus c. And my u is x plus 5. So. My whole answer here, this is how you know you're in calculus, is x cubed over 3 minus 5x squared over 2 plus 19x minus 115 times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 5 plus c. Wow, right? <laughs> you have a great day.